Jay, I am so thrilled that you are joining me on Voices of Stack. You have gone through so much um, in the past few years, um, and now you are working at Mass Mutual and using your background in data science and analytics at Mass Mutual. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing? My work at Mass Mutual is, is focused uh, within a new division. Uh, it has a similar feel to a startup, but within sort of the security of a, uh, you know, 150 year plus financial institution. My position is a data and reporting analyst, and that is at a sort of management level where I'm an individual producer, and I'm largely responsible for creating the data infrastructure and reporting for annuities and whole life sales. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think what's exciting, you know, as you shared with me, is that while Mass Mutual um, is a really big company, and for you uh, personally and professionally, it was really great to work at such a supportive um, and big company. I think what's cool is that you're working at this like innovative pocket um, within a really large company. Now, let me ask you this. So before you transitioned into this role, you were trying to figure out what's next, right? So tell me a little bit about life before this role. Sure. Uh, I did a lot of research. I was at a point in my career where I had kind of hit a plateau. I had worked in financial services and within finance, uh, most recently as a kind of financial management consulting. And I knew that I needed to make a change. I had known it for some time. And I did a lot of careful research and analysis in what would be most agreeable to my personality and interests. You know, uh, be, due to my, my own physical limitations, I, I was looking for something agreeable with my personality, but also where I was going to be able to make the most amount of money possible without necessarily sacrificing quality of life. I had gone through and looked at several programs very carefully uh, and came upon a stack as a result of that research. And I asked a lot of questions. Uh, I, I met with several, several people at stack and really got a feel for what the program was like and what that might look like for me moving forward. You did ask a lot of questions. I was the beneficiary of those questions, but I love those questions, Jay, because to me, that showed exactly what you just shared, that you were thoughtful, that you were deliberate, that you did some own reflection on what you needed and what you wanted in a program um, and that you were going to find that. Let's talk about the schedule. So I know that you said like, look, Peggy, this, this fit my schedule because I needed to work full time while being able to make the transition, which is the story of many. Why don't you tell us kind of like the time commitment actually needed to do this program? So there's of course class at night, but what other, you know, what's the reality of the time commitment and the schedule of the program? I think I have found out through the experience and as I have many times in life, uh, the, the outcome is, is largely based on your personal commitment uh, period, whether you're doing that full-time or part-time, uh, it was challenging. I mean, working nine to five and then doing the program in the evenings, occasionally I found myself sort of burnt out from the day and I would need to put in extra time on the weekends uh, in order to truly catch up and absorb the material. And it was important to me because I was very committed, not just to the program, but very committed and intentional about making this change in my life. So what you're saying is, look, everyone, it's not enough to just show up for class. There are still extra hours that you need to put in to review what's been, been, been taught in class, to work on your homework um, and projects. It, it's going to require more time than just the time in class. Yeah, it, the time in class is extremely critical and I did everything possible to avoid missing class uh, because that's the time you have with the instructor to ask questions uh, and have, you know, a bit more guidance. Okay. Thanks for sharing, Jay. Um, 
out of curiosity, because you had known you'd wanted to change jobs before, before you did the program, you know, were you actively searching for new jobs? And if so, what was that job search like? If I was going to get a new job, it was going to be a job basically doing the same thing. Yes, I might make a little bit more money or have better working conditions than I had in that previous role, but I was deeply unhappy with the work that I was doing. So I basically backed off on the job search in order to dedicate the most amount of time possible to uh, retraining myself. So you had done the work, you had looked for jobs and then you realized, look, uh, you know, I'm only going to get jobs that sure might pay me more, but I'm going to be doing the same work. Yeah, I think that it was, the money was a factor, but it wasn't the most important factor because I had, had had a long enough career to know that if you hate what you're doing, no amount of money is going to change that. That's profound, Jay, that no amount of money is going to make a job that you hate better. I've got two more questions for you. The first question is, what would you tell your younger self? What advice would you give your younger self? I, you know, I, I think I would tell my younger self to really focus and dis- decide, discern what, what you want to be doing and head in that direction. It's okay to not have uh, the exact answer of what, what the future is going to look like as long as you know you're heading in the right direction, if you're listening to yourself um, in reality and heading in that direction. Uh, That's something I wish I had learned. I would learned it relatively young, but I wish I had learned it maybe even as an early teen uh, is to not, you know, not focus on so much on what others think and actually focus on myself and what, what makes, what brings me happiness. Um, The question that I always end up asking everyone at the end is for those about to navigate an inflection point at the start of navigating an inflection point, thinking about navigating an inflection point, what advice would you give? Is it any different than what you just shared? Is there anything else you want to add? I think it would be um, similar to, to what I just said in the sense that I, I was navigating, you know, before we re- started recording, I was navigating several inflection points. It wasn't just that I didn't like what I was doing uh, career-wise. I, you know, had found myself in relatively dire straits, you know, long-term relationship ending, um, not losing my job and then getting a job back, but it took over a year to do so. The, the inflection points will come and go, but you sh- sometimes you really need to take that first step in order to make the inflection point, uh, make it to the inflection point and you will get through the other side. Um, I couldn't have imagined uh, even when I first met Peggy where I would be sitting in this chair where I am now, making the amount of money that I'm making, doing the work I wanna be doing, in already having opportunities to level up and further my career path. Jay, you just brought tears to my eyes. I was trying really hard not to blink. So, so tears can't be seen. Um, but I am so grateful for you sharing not just your professional journey, um, but your personal journey and how oftentimes everything is intertwined. Um, whether it's a personal inflection point or professional inflection point, but if you push through one, it becomes a lot easier um, to push through others. Thank you so much for sharing, um, sharing you, um, for inspiring others. Um, and we are so lucky and excited um, to call you, you know, a part of the Stack Alumni community. Thank you for sharing your voice with us, Jay. No problem. Thank you for having me.